15 Minute Guide to Gymnastics Scoring by Gymnastics HQ. In this video, we are specifically talking about scoring for the USA Gymnastics Junior Olympic Program and Excel Program. The Junior Olympic Program consists of compulsories from levels one through five and optionals from levels six through 10. And then the Excel Program runs from Excel Bronze through Excel Diamond. In compulsories, all gymnasts perform the same routines with the same skills. Whereas in optionals and the Excel program, the gymnasts pick the skills they want to perform, but they must meet certain skill requirements within their level. Regardless of skill level, judges are looking for a few things across the board. They are looking at whether the gymnast fulfilled the routine requirements. They're looking at how she executed her skills. They're looking at the overall performance of her routines, and they also look for miscellaneous deductions. We're going to break this down further for you. So the first thing that judges look for are, are the routine requirements met? So in compulsories, all the gymnasts perform the same routines, and all the skills have to be performed in the same order. And so the judges look to see, are the skills performed in the same order and are they performed the way they are supposed to be as far as doing the always the left leg or always the right leg. And so there are some um, deductions they can take. So for example, if a skill is omitted, the judges can subtract twice the value of that skill. Or if a skill is reversed, let's say they do their right foot first instead of their left foot, the judges can subtract half the value of that skill. And so they are looking for specific requirements that all the gymnasts do, but they must be performed in the exact same way. They cannot add their own skills or do anything out of order. For optionals and Excel routines, it's a little bit different because the gymnasts can make up their own routines. However, they have to fulfill specific special requirements for each routine. And so the judges are, as the gymnasts are doing their routine, the judges are writing down a shorthand of the skills that the gymnasts are doing. And at the end of the routine, the judges go back and make sure that the, the gymnasts have fulfilled the special requirements. If a special requirement is missing, that is a 0.5 deduction. So that's a big deal. In addition to the special requirements, in optional and Excel program, they also have value part requirements. At each level, there is a certain number of value parts that each um, gymnast is required to meet. And so, for example, if a gymnast is missing any of them, there will be deductions taken. So for an A value part, a judge can take off a tenth. And for a, v, a B value part that is missing, they can take off three tenths. And for a C value part that's missing, they can take off five tenths. And so this is a pretty big deal. Again, the judges go back, look at their shorthand, and make sure that these value part requirements have been met. In addition to the special requirements and the value part requirements, levels nine and 10 need bonus connections in order to start from a 10.0 as a starting score. So that's, a, that's also something that judges will look for when they're evaluating a level nine or 10 routine. Finally, another thing that judges will look for when reviewing their shorthand is whether or not a gymnast performed a skill that is not allowed at her level. So if a gymnast performs a, a C-valued part skill at um, a level where she's only supposed to perform B-valued skills, then a deduction would be taken from her start value. And in some cases, if a gymnast does a skill that is not allowed, it can actually void a routine. So for example, if a gymnast does a vault um, that is not allowed at that level, she would receive a score of zero. The second thing that judges look for is execution of skills. So in compulsories, the routines must be executed exactly as the text describes, or else a deduction is taken. And so it's very rare for this to happen, for there to be no deductions at all in a compulsory routine, because the gymnasts really do have to perform it exactly as the text describes. 
So for example, if a gymnast separates her legs when they should be together, she can get up to two tenths deductions or a deduction. Or if she has a balance error, that can be up to three tenths. If her arms or legs are bent when they should be straight, that can be up to three tenths. Uh, if she reverses or omits a part of the routine, that can be a tenth. And so these are all deductions that get taken when the judges evaluate a compulsory routine for execution. For optional routines, the skills are also evaluated for execution. It's a little bit different since the gymnasts are doing different skills. However, for every skill, the judge must ask themselves if the skill is being executed perfectly according to the Junior Olympic Code of Points. And if not, then they decide on the execution deductions that would apply. And so, for example, things like um, leaps or hops or jumps, if they don't rise up enough off the floor of the beam, they can take up to two tenths deduction. If toes are not pointed on a skill, that could be you know a half a tenth deduction. If legs or knees are separated, that could be up to two tenths. And so these are just examples of some deductions that judges can take, but they have a whole code of points of of a list of deductions that are appropriate for each skill that the ju uh, that the gymnast does and the judges will decide whether or not uh, the gymnast has executed that skill flawlessly or if not what the deduction would be for that skill. The third thing that judges look for when evaluating a routine is the overall performance and so they ask themselves did this gymnast routine wow and by wow if you ever have seen Caitlin Ohashi's 10.0 routine that she did in college, that's a wow. So she had expression, she had artistry. So they look at artistry and dynamics. Is there, is the gymnast, you know, like smiling? Is she using her body confidently? Is there just expression and dynamics? Is, is it the routine constantly flowing or are there pauses? Because that's those are deductions there. So the judges use this artistry and dynamics deduction or deductions as a way to sort of rank the gymnast because this can sep separate the, the gymnast who maybe had a similar execution score, um, but they can separate them based on their artistry and their dynamics. In addition, starting at level eight, routines have additional deductions that can be taken based on how the routine was composed itself. And so, um, you know, they would ask things like, are all the hard skills at the beginning of the routine or, as opposed to being spread out, things like that. So they actually dissect the uh, routine and look at it as far as composition. Finally, when evaluating routine, the last thing the judges consider are any miscellaneous deductions that occurred. And these are ones that are just flat deductions that need to be taken. So it could be things like stepping out of bounds or being spotted during a routine if the routine went over time, if the gymnast failed to present to the judge, things like that that are just flat deductions that apply to any gymnast who makes that, that error. And so those are things that get um, deducted at the end. So after all of those areas are considered, the judges will come up with a final score. The maximum score is a 10.0, and that is assuming that the gymnast has met all the requirements to get her um, score, get her base score to a 10.0, and then they'll come up with a score. So that was an overall look at how judges come up with their scores. However, we wanna break it down per event because there are certain things that judges are looking for on each event. So let's start with a vault. For vault scoring, the first thing you need to know is that there are three phases to a vault, and this is something many people do not know. And so what happens during vault is that deductions can be taken in each of the phases of the vault. So you've got the first flight phase when the gymnast is between the springboard and the vault table. You've got the support and repulsion phase when the gymnast is actually on the vault table. And then you have the second flight phase as she's coming off and going into her landing. And so if a gymnast, for example, has bent legs, she gets a deduction for bent legs taken in all three phases. That's how scores can you know, get lowered significantly really quickly when it doesn't look like it was a bad vault. But if you look and you see some form errors, they occur in all three phases, or if they do occur in all three phases, those deductions get taken three times. So that is an important thing to recognize about vault. The other thing is that angles are, are really big on vault. And so 
there are deductions that are taken based on what angle a um, gymnast is coming in towards the vault table and then what angle she exits. And so the judges are you know, really good and they're really quick to look and to assess the angle at which she hits the vault table and at which she leaves it. And so um, you can see in this chart here that depending on how she hits the vault table, there are specific deductions that are taken. The other thing that judges look for in, in um, vault are dynamics. So how powerful was the vault? How much height did she get? How much distance did she get? So those are all dynamics. It's the power, the powerfulness of the vault. And um, that's something that gets taken as well. So that's, that's a huge one that's looked at for vault. On bars, angles are very important. So judges are looking with their eyes to see what angle the gymnasts hit, whether it is for their cast or coming out of circling elements or if it's for their handstands at higher levels. So they are looking to make sure that the gymnast has achieved the minimum required angle for that skill. And if they have not, then that is a deduction. So angles are super, super important in, on bars. In addition, rhythm is huge on bars. So the rhythm of a bar routine is important. The skill should be performed in a row without extra swings or stops or casts. And so that's what judges are looking for. For example, a deduction for an extra cast or an extra swing is three tenths. So that can add up quickly if a gymnast continuously, you know, adds that extra cast or adds an extra swing or even stops. So those are things that uh, judges are looking for on bars. Now for beam scoring, one of the most important things that judges are looking for is balance. That's pretty obvious when looking at a beam routine. But balance errors can really add up in a routine. So a error, a balance error could be small, like a tiny wobble, or it could be large where you make lots of big movements. Balance errors can get a deduction of up to three tenths. And if you fall on or off beam, it's five tenths deduction. And so balance is really important for beam. The other thing that is important for beam is the height and angle of the jumps and leaps in, your, in the gymnast routine. And so every jump, every leap that a gymnast does is evaluated for height off the beam, as well as um, the angles in which the split leap or the jump got to. So those are the two things that um, the judges are looking for, the height and the angle of the jumps and the leaps. So sometimes gymnasts don't even realize, but they're not meeting that angle requirement when they do a split leap or a split jump. And so they're getting deductions on that. Now on floor, similar to beam, the height and angle of jumps and leaps is really important. So again, every time a gymnast jumps or leaps on floor, the judges are looking to see if the jump or leap met the angle requirement and if the gymnast got sufficient hip rise off the ground. If they did not, there will be an angle or height deduction. And also sometimes gymnasts will have jumps or leaps where there's a turn involved. And so the judges are looking very closely at a gymnast's feet to see where those feet touch down and to assess what degree of turn that that gymnast met, whether or not she met the full, the full, you know, full turn of it or the full degrees of her turn or if she was short on that. And those are deductions there. The other thing that judges look for on floor are the height and form of their tumbling skills. And so they wanna know, you know, the form is huge, of course, on floor, but in the air, you know, and while the gymnasts are tumbling, is their form good? Are their legs together? Are their legs straight? Are their arms straight? Um, are their feet pointed? Those are things that they're looking for. And they're also looking for the height of the tumbling skills. So they're looking how high the gymnast gets off the floor during her saltos and her tumbling passes and you know and also look of course as she comes down at how her landing is as you can see there are many components to a gymnastics score first the routine is evaluated for requirements to determine the start value then execution deductions are taken and the overall performance is evaluated then any miscellaneous deductions are taken the deductions are added up and subtracted from the start value to determine the score. So hopefully this was helpful and uh, can give you a better idea of what judges are looking for. If you found this video helpful, please share it with others.